everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. This week, we're gonna start disassembly of the Porsche. Let's get to it. So I am really wanting to get to this next build, but um, it just will not stop snowing. It's like April 4th, and we got about a foot of snow today. And we also have some things behind the car that we need to move, and it's just, it's not really gonna happen. It has been a long journey. Guess what I got? Let's open it. Check that out. I'll let you guys read that on your own time if you wanna pause the video. Thanks, Rick. Man, look at how cool that is. Guys, I've only ever seen this like on YouTube videos. This is amazing. Man, that is so awesome. I gotta find a place to hang it in my garage. So a few months back, I did a video for gift ideas for guys, you know, garage sort of things, man cave things. I actually had two companies um, come after that video was released and wanted to give me some stuff to showcase. So I figured uh, as long as I'm hanging things up, let me show you what else I got. So this says electric supercar, muscle car garage. And this one actually has a whole bunch of LEDs on the back. So I'm excited to hang this up and see what it looks like. All right, so it is steel. Looks like it's powder coated black. Again, really nice, really nice lines, really nice quality. It's quite large as well. This is probably like 15 inches, maybe 18 inches wide. All right, what do you think? Looks pretty cool. The snow has melted enough that we got this thing pushed in. It'll be time to disassemble, but first, a word from our new partner. Have you ever wondered why cell phone bills are so high? Let me introduce you to who I'm partnering with, Mint Mobile. Hey there, it's Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile. Enticing, right? Ryan Reynolds is the owner of Mint Mobile. They make some great commercials and really stick to the low budget. So Mint Mobile offers premium wireless internet for only $15 a month. And they're built on the nation's largest 5G network. So if you think about it, why should you pay any more to access the same network? So click on the link in the video description below or scan the QR code to get the best value in wireless. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspots. Mint Mobile also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. So I can tell you from my experience with Mint Mobile, um, if I'm watching YouTube, uh, doing some work in the garage, listening to music, I've not noticed any difference in any of the uh, wireless speeds. Switching to Mint Mobile is super easy. Thanks to their digital e-SIM cards, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your own home. Or if you'd like, Mint will ship you a new SIM card free of charge. The whole process only takes 15 minutes, and if you get stuck, they've got customer service there to help you. If you're interested in reliable coverage, fast data at a fraction of the cost, go to mintmobile.com slash electric supercar to get started today. And if you've already made the switch, let me know in the comments. All right, before we get started on this journey, we are gonna take a weight. And I want to get close to this weight when we are done. 
we're going to be adding hundreds of pounds of batteries, which means we need to make sure we are saving weight in other areas. Roughly 2,900 pounds, and that's with all the fluids and things. 1,316 kilograms. All right, so this one, it's 44 and a half front, 55 and a half rear. So this is left, right. So again, pretty evenly split, a little lighter on the left. So that's actually good because you're going to be sitting on the left. That is the baseline. Let's start digging into it. Just thought I'd share some things as I'm disassembling. So we've got right under the front bumper here, there's a hose find out what that goes to I'm not sure the other thing is over here I just wanted to take this uh, front hood off but we've got this little line here goes here that's for the windshield washer sprayers the other thing is people were concerned that maybe that was like a pedestrian or something I am fairly certain it is not so the front impact here you can actually almost make out the license plate so there, these are the numbers, that's like a Y. Anyways, you can almost make out the license plate. So my guess is the Porsche was going pretty quick, stopped, which brought the front down when you stop and hit the back of somebody else's car. My guess is the back of their car went all the way up here. I'm thinking that's a tire. This thing was probably wedged underneath. Both of these headlights are broken. We've got some other things to figure out, see how far the damage goes. We've got some of our first fluid there. That one luckily is just wiper fluid. All right, we have the front bumper off. And uh, looking at the crash damage, it's really interesting. Like this front bumper here is basically untouched. So I think when the collision happened, this one broke, you know, they, they applied the brakes and really caused the nose to go down. And almost all the uh, impact was here and above. So I've got to take out the headlights. Those are both broken. Um, and I'll take off kind of these two fenders here. So this is the uh, Porsche toolkit. Got your tow hook. Um, I think what I really need, I believe is this one helps get the headlights out. Lots of cool stuff we're learning. This has got some serious hardware on the back, like big old heat sink. I'll disconnect this one. Yeah, this is fun. Let's see if it'll drip some more. Yeah, go. Do you see that water? All right, if anybody wants to understand how this works, this is what keeps it in place. 
So this one comes in from that side there and it hooks on here and then this is able to kind of release it. Pretty cool. All right, well this one's gonna be more challenging because the hole no longer lines up with the light housing. So we'll have to figure out how to get that off. So as far as damage goes, um, this side didn't get hit very bad. We still have some crinkling right here, but basically this headlight and all the alignment here was pretty much right on. The bumper, strangely enough, is pretty much untouched. This one over here is all slid back. So you see where that line is there. It kind of matches that plastic piece. Over here, you'll see it kind of comes forward quite a bit. So. I don't know, maybe like three or four inches. So this one's slid back and you can see all the crinkling here. So that whole side's kind of crinkled a little bit. And the other place, again, it seems like it missed the bumper, but kind of went right here on the hood. So this part's kind of bent forward, that part's bent back. And then obviously the hood, it's got lots of scratches and dents. I put a battery charger on this one. Um, this battery's completely dead. The reason for that is the frunk was not closed and there's a light on, and so when the front is not closed, the light's on. So basically, all juice was gone. So we're gonna see if this is recoverable or we may need to get a new battery. I'm thinking this one might be airbag sensor. Can't quite tell what else it is, so I've got some information there, I'll look it up. All right, I finally got uh, the driver fender off here. It is not very easy. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty challenging. So I ended up just cutting things off here. The other side I was able to get a little better. But this, kind, this side was munched a little bit more. So there are bolts that are under here that actually have nuts on the underside that you have to undo to get this to come out. Um, so I still need to do that or just cut them out. There's, I think, one also like under there. It's got several over here. It's got a few on the underside of the wheel well here. The most challenging part though, again, since the fender was pretty mangled, um, I just kind of cut it off so I could access back, back here. So I had a couple of these um, plastic, I'll call them rivets, where it's got like a little plunger that sticks through. You have to stick the plunger back through and then kind of push it back through. And then it had a whole bunch more, um, kind of like these that were in several places. So like one's right here, another one down here, another one there. Anyway, so pretty challenging. We'll see if we can get the other one off on the other side. There, finally. It's got the passenger side off. Um, this one's probably a little easier. Um, again, had fastener here, one even behind there. I don't know if you can see that. Down here, and then there, and then this part just, oh, I don't know why, but it just took for a long time to figure out how this one unclipped. And then this part comes like, and so it, again, it has kind of three of these uh, where you kind of push it in and then the center part goes in to kind of lock it. So you have to push the center part out and then pull it out. So I have three of those. Again, not too bad, but uh, obviously if you're doing it the second time, go way faster. So I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking this is probably supposed to be symmetrical. So on this side, we've got this one and this. This one's on this angle. And over here, 
I can actually see it's kind of bent a little bit. And I think this one's pushed back all this gap in here. So I think this whole thing is probably supposed to be out a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, so you can see kind of like that much space between the uh, radiator and the fender there. And take it over here. It's like almost touching. So I think that one just kind of got pushed back a little bit. quite take this off because uh, the pins normally are straight so you'd be able to take it off but the pins are wedged in so I'm actually gonna try and uh, push this one out straight stop for now um, what I need to do is I'm actually gonna go to the DMV and see what I need to do to get this thing registered I'm wondering if it's somehow easier to get it registered as a gas powered car in which case uh, I don't want to necessarily start taking all the gas things off and if that's easier then we'll, we'll maybe uh, do that and get it registered and then start going to convert it to electric if it's not, we'll just start uh, tearing more things apart. So down here, I've just got all the electrical, so I can kind of start seeing the wiring loom, how that's all put together. So down here, that's a gas, gas tank. And again, before we want to start uh, messing with that, we want to make sure that we don't need that anymore. So one other thing I'll do, I will actually keep a tally, both of the money as well as the hours. I think those are two things that people ask me the most is how long did it take and how much do you spend? So we'll keep track of that for you. Just so you can see, you may be curious how much uh, YouTube revenue this brings in. I'll show you some of the uh, actual numbers that I got. And this kind of helps you understand that uh, we may need to supplement this, that YouTube will not necessarily fund this car. So building cars is not cheap. So one of the things I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna get an Amazon affiliate account. I actually did this one time previously when I hit 10,000 subscribers. And after about three months, they actually kicked me out of the program and wanted to charge me a fee. Uh, hopefully this round goes a little bit better. So let me tell you how this works. Um, I'm gonna put some affiliate links in the video descriptions. And if you click on any of those links, any of the sales you do from those links will actually give me a small commission. Even if the link that brings you to Amazon is not the thing you buy, I still get a commission from anything that you buy. Say you wanna buy your mom a sun hat. What you should do is click on one of the affiliate links 
then navigate over to the sun hat, buy that, I will then get a commission from that. Um, at the end of every episode, I'm just gonna kind of showcase the tools I used to complete this episode. Surprisingly, not a lot of tools are required. Um, sockets, I think I only used the 10 millimeter and the 13 millimeter. Um, I did end up cutting some things. This is a DeWalt handheld angle grinder. Just your standard ratchet. I really like this uh, long wobble adapter. Um, got one of these kind of U-joint things. A label maker. Again, make, make sure to label your wires as well as any of the bolts and things you take off. Um, this one was also, it had a lot of star bits, Torx heads, whatever you call these ones. Um, I actually got the uh, security ones. These will actually do both. And all I needed for this one, I think, was the 25 and the 30. This is a nice adapter that mounts with this one, so you can kind of drive those pretty quick. And I'll try and leave a link in the description for most of these tools. One other thing is this car or project needs a name. So I'd love to hear your names in the comments. We'll pick the best one. All right, well, thank you everybody for tuning in. We got a lot more to disassemble. Uh, the other car, the first car, the blue car, um, we actually have some paint correction that we're gonna get to. That video will be coming out very soon as well. So thanks for tuning in. See you next time.